And now we're going to move on to voting protocols. So voting protocols are not automated and they require human inputs. And I'm going to introduce a few voting protocols as well as some projects that use them. And I will also be, I'll also be sharing um, some QR codes for if you're interested in going deeper into the specific voting protocols. Some of them also have your uh, solidity code if you want to implement them and like some tutorials. So if you're interested, you can just get your phone out and scan the QR code when it's time to. Okay, so we're going to start with the first one again on traditional voting. I, I really dislike traditional voting, so I keep talking about it so much, as you can imagine, because traditional voting is, is broken. So one per firstly, it's the one person, one vote. It's fair to the extent where everyone has an equal opportunity, but it's, it's, not, it's not really good because it leads to information asym uh, because of information asymmetry. You can't, you, you can't put in your intensity of preference and also an individual might not be the best candidate to be voting on this issue because they just don't have enough information on it. Whereas another person has. So giving the person with no information the same vote as the person with a lot of information, it's, it's not really fair when we're talking about, you know, voting governance, voting for governance in the ecosystem. You also have voting qualification, which is similar to voting uh, information asymmetry. It can also lead to plutocracy because of because it's easier to bribe. A person that's very wealthy can just bribe someone off chain or bribe someone in a traditional way. Or another way is you lobby, like you lobby for the Congress or whatever um, stuff they usually do, and you alter the vote. So traditional voting can be quite there are problems with, with traditional voting. I'm not saying that it's the worst out there, but there are, there are problems. It could work in some situations, but it doesn't work in other situations. So what are the solutions then? This is the first solution. It's called Commit Review. And I'm going to share a few other um, solutions. So Commit Review works like this. First, you have your, you have your decision. Okay. So I have, I have a piece of paper and I write my, my proposal down. So I write my proposal down and I cover it. I keep it in a secret and I, I lock it. And, and then I wait for, and I will tell, I will shout to everyone and say, guys, I vote for A. So you don't know what I put inside. And then you just tell everyone, guys, I vote for A. And then all the votes are being tabulated and you open. Now we have to check your vote and we open it and then you check A. I voted for A. So now the public, because I was, before that I was, remember I was shouting to everyone that I voted for A. Now the public gets to verify my vote. So I committed to my vote. I keep it. I review to everyone. By, by just saying, you know, talk is cheap, but just saying. And then after that, it's reviewed properly and everyone gets to verify if it's, if it's true. Then a winner is declared. So that is in the real world, in the digital world. What we do is instead of telling everyone that, guys, my vote is A, I don't tell them that. I have a vote. I, gener I generate a unique hash to it and I distribute the hash. So the hash is like a key to, um, I don't have it here, yeah. but I have a key to a lock. Okay. I've got, I've got, okay. I've got a key and I've got a lock and I keep my secret or my, my vote A in a lock, but I give the key to everyone. Now, no one can get the lock because I keep it with me, but I give everyone the hash. So to show that. I have, I have committed to my outcome. But I'm not going to tell everyone it's A, but I just tell everyone, now you have my key. I duplicated this key. Everyone has this key and this is my lock. When it's time for you to start counting the votes, you can open and you can use the lock and open and check. So, cause it's about verifying, right? And so you do that. Everyone has, has the key and then they calculate the vote and it's time to show your vote. So you put the key out, you put the lock out there, everyone goes and open, open the, 
open your your vote and then you know that this is your vote when the key that i give you can open this lock and to review your choice so that's how it works in the digital decentralized world and this mechanism this method is called commit review this election works in um on ethereum and if you are interested this is the oops this is the smart contract this is the the link that you can go to you can just scan the qr code and it teaches you how to write it write this code on ethereum smart contract if you're using this for election for election or voting and it shows you how you put that in solidity so you can scan it if you want you can pause it now if you want to scan and read more about it otherwise i'm going to go Okay, so that's just one of the solutions. The other one is quadratic, quadratic voting. I told you many times about quadratic voting. So you, now you can talk about intensity of vote. I can place as many votes as I want. The cost to place the vote is the square of the number of votes. So if I want to place 10 votes, the cost is 100. If I want to place 200 votes, the cost is 400. If I just want to do one vote, the cost is one. So what I do is I make it exponentially expensive for people to make larger and larger votes. So this is good because then, you know, you, you allow the intensity of votes and also you allow, you allow for, um, you allow for intensity of votes and you allow for someone to, to keep their votes until they, they see a proposal that they're very, very passionate about. So this works, this worked in one of the slow town in Japan where they, implemented quadratic voting in this little town and this guy is very passionate about voting on this specific um, Japanese emblem for the, the city. Sure, there are going to be bigger players like corporates that have um, more, they, they have more disposable uh, costs so that they can vote more but or or let's say uh, uh, the government allocates votes to people. So if there's so many proposals to be voting on but this guy is very passionate about keeping this specific identity for the village. So he keeps keeping all his votes that is being allocated to him for two years. Finally, when they are talking about, okay, tomorrow we're going to, you can cast your votes to vote on if we want to keep this specific sword as this, um, as the symbol for our village. And because he has been keeping his vote for that, now he puts all his vote on the specific um to to say that yes i want to keep the sword and now the at the end of the day the vote passed and the sword is kept as the as the, the sign for this village because you show the intensity of preference and people can keep their votes until they vote for something that they're really passionate about so it kind of kind of resolves the voting um apathy problem because your votes are, your votes can actually mean so much if you start keeping them and you vote for things that really matter. So the cost of influence um, is the number of, of vote. And for other people who don't care so much, they don't they don't really yeah. If you don't care so much, you don't you don't keep your votes until something you don't really keep your votes to vote for something important. So there there are similar models being used in the token ecosystems. It's not like hundred percent implemented yet. Um, Exim chain EXIM chain. They are talking about it. I have not seen them really implementing it, but they are doing. They have quite a few um, proposals or uh, articles about that. Definity does something. Definity and Tezos does something similar, as in um, stake weighted votes instead of quadratic voting. So it's it's a similar concept, but it's quite different. So and quadratic voting is being um, experimented. One problem with quadratic voting is that it doesn't resolve the problem of uh, civil attack. Remember civil attack where one person has a lot of votes and he can just split his, himself into like 10 different identities and vote and vote based on that. Or it doesn't resolve the problem of bribery. I can, because if I want to make nine votes, if I want to make three votes, it costs me nine to, it costs me nine to make the vote right. But if I just, pay three if i just get three people to vote one each it costs me three because one to the to one square is one and maybe i just give them extra votes one each and i still have savings so quadratic, there are problems with quadratic voting and maybe that's that's also why no 
people are not fully implementing that right now. Ethereum is also looking at, at implementing quadratic voting, but quadratic voting, um, there's still problems with that. So one solution is to combine quadratic voting with something else. And that's going to be interesting. But let's move on first. Oh, so one example is, is this. Um, so it's matching funds. So the amount, amount received by the project is the sum of the square roots of the contributions received. Basically, it's a long case study. Um, you can get it, get the, the link and see how it works. Um, yeah, so one of the, one of the initial use cases for a lot of these very interesting, innovative, uh, creative voting mechanisms, they are usually, for some reason, they're always used in, um, funding, donation, philanthropic activities. Um, I don't know why, but this is just, it's, it's just like that. So you can link, you can go to this QR code and read more about it. And then I'm going to go next. Uh, okay, quorum voting. So this is something got to do with JP's, JP Morgan's Chase um, Chrome blockchain platform. Quorum is just, quorum just means a minimum number of people required. So quorum voting means a num the minimum number of people required to validate the proposal, to validate the vote, or just minimum number of people required to vote to get an outcome of the number of, of the outcome, right? So this can be used in permission blockchains. This is really simple. This can also be mixed with something else. So maybe, yeah, this can be mixed with one of the other voting mechanisms and say that I need at least 50% of the ecosystem to be voting. I don't care what proposal you vote, but I need 50% of the people in the ecosystem or vote holders to be voting for us to pass the vote. Then it reduces a voter apathy because now people realize that, oh shit, if I don't vote, then this ecosystem doesn't go forward and then um, it reduces activities. And then me as a token holder, I want activities to continue moving so, so that it adds value to the token and then I will want to vote. So this could be something, this could be one of the, the solutions. So Definity uses that on continuous quorum selection by reading random beacon in the consensus algorithm. So, that's just like a small thing. The other thing is delegated voting. Once again, the problems with information asymmetry, voters apathy, voting qualification, because people are just not, I would say not qualified, but maybe not equally interested in the proposal, not equally interested, or not equally invested, or just not knowing enough information to be making right votes. So what do they do? They outsource the voting opportunity, opportunity to someone. So think of it as a proxy vote, or uh, think of it like a, a different type of proxy vote. So, so instead of, of me voting, I say, okay, I will give you the oppor opportunity to vote. And there are many types of delegated voting. So the first one, you've got um, EOS. EOS has master nodes. And it's not just EOS, uh, there, there's also Swarm tokens, Swarm ecosystem, where they have a couple of master nodes, where they'll be the one making the main decisions. And you basically delegate the, your, your governance to these people. Or if you want to be, if you want to be, um, or if you have a lot of information, you have, you're qualified to be the one making decisions, you can apply to be a must note. The other one is VChain. So you've got authority notes versus economic notes. Authority notes are kind of like master notes where they make decisions. Economic notes are basic, are, are all the other notes available. Then you can apply for one, for each one. You've got delegated proof of stake where you, you get to vote for a few delegates to secure the network, which is something like master nodes. And then this new case study that I've, I've heard about is Fusion. So I have Fusion tokens and Fusion tokens allow me, allows me to vote and allows me to vote in the delegated proof of stake way. So I get to stake tokens, but maybe I just don't have enough information. I don't have enough time to be voting. I'm not qualified enough to vote. I'm not invested in it. Like I like the project, but I have other things to do in my life and I would like to outsource that voting opportunity to someone. And so that's what Fusion does. I can, I have my vote, I have my token and the token allows me to vote. And I delegate this vote to someone else. And I say that I let, I let allow you to use the tokens for two months and you can be staking. This is through delegated proof of stake. Right? You can be staking based on my 
tokens and my my function of voting and then um you get a commission on whatever that's that comes out of it so if you vote well you get a commission on it um you get like 50 percent, and i get to keep 50 percent because i rent my the power to vote to you so there are a lot of um interesting innovations when it comes to de delegated voting and different different levels of implementation so it can range from being a master node where you are you you basically want to be the part of the governance and the voting to delegate a proof of stake to renting it out and collecting um, fees by renting it out so these are different delegated proof of stake the other and <clears throat> Number two, number two, we saw committed re commit review. Number six, here we're going to look at partial lock commit review. So commit review is where you shout your choice and you tell people, you can either shout your choice, shout, give the key to people, give your hash to people, then when it's validated, people will check. Partial lock is instead of shouting your choice, you want to tell people that, you know, I've made, I've committed, I've made my commission, I've committed to, to, to vote. But instead of telling people your choice or giving people your hash, you stake it with tokens and this is and you can participate in multiple polls simultaneously so instead of giving every single people i've got different locks and different hashes instead of giving guys this is hash number one for lock number one but this is hash number two three four for lock number two three four because i'm going to be voting on four different proposals and these are the different hashes for the different locks and it must be so annoying if you are the one receiving the hash and you're like shit which hash for which lock? And shit, there's so many hashes available. So what do I do? Instead of giving that to everyone, I say, okay, I've made my decision. And instead of just giving you the, instead of giving a hash and it's so messy, I'm just going to stick my choice with tokens to prove that I have committed to, to my vote. And um, sometimes tokens can be staked. That means uh, you can lose that. Or sometimes tokens are just locked, are committed. No, they're locked during the voting period. So you can't use it, it reduces, uh, you can't do the double spending thing. <clears throat> so there are similar examples where you have token curated registries or token weighted voting. Because token weighted voting is something similar, something similar with Tezos and Definity. And token curated registries are the decentralized list of uh, ranking that we talked about, and Ocean Protocol uses that. And if you want to look at how to implement that on Solidity, you can scan this QR code and it looks at the case study for um, partial lot commit review voting and how to implement it on Solidity. Smart contract. Do that and we're going next. Okay, next is um, Politia voting. So Politia, it's a Greek word that means the rights of citizens to form a government. So um, all the tokens are coin holders get to vote on issues. This is very similar to the Switzerland's uh, voting model, where instead of a top-down, instead of government saying that these are issues and topics that you want to be, I want you guys to vote on, the it goes from bottom up, where citizens say that I want this, this, and this. And we are part of the government and we're part of the country, so we, we have the right to say that we want to talk about the issues here, bring it up to the government, people get to vote on that. And this is something similar where as soon as you're part of the instead of the foundation or the project saying saying that these are proposals to vote upon you get to recommend proposals to vote upon and it could be something like more coins equals more voting power this is also where you can probably mix you know because the polit uh, politia voting is where you can vote based on this you can vote based on uh, you can recommend proposals and you can mix this with something like projected voting. So you want to remove maybe you want to remove the issue of uh, more coins equals more voting power. You can re we can reduce that because then it's not fair. You can reduce that by implementing a projected voting and you have have these two combined together. Yeah, that could be something that works, you know, because it's not a one size fits all. It, it's a combination of different kind of concepts. These are just foundational voting pieces, like a jigsaw puzzle. So this is an example, Decred, Decred uses that. And you can scan the QR code and learn more about Decred and how that works for Decred. Can we go in next? Uh, okay, last, last, last. Okay, 
Last is, this is very interesting. I, I actually um, spent a lot of time learning about this. It's called conviction voting. And conviction, conviction voting is fun because it's a continuous voting. I like this model that uh, Jeff Emmett drew. Basically, you, it's a tap that has water flowing out and the water flows out to the different buckets. Each bucket is a proposal. So you propose A, B, C, D, E. And the faucet is you voting, okay? Now, as a voter, I can say that um, I want to do, I want to vote 5% of my vote to proposal A. And I don't care about proposal B, so I'm not gonna vote that. Uh, I can, I do 20% of proposal C, 30% proposal D, 45% uh, proposal E. I'm very interested to vote on proposal E, but I also think that, you know, the other proposals are worth my votes or my tokens. I can vote on that. Or maybe I can say I'm very, so we're talking about intensity, okay? You can talk about intensity here. Or I can say, you know, I'm very interested in voting D. I just want to vote D and I turn on the tab and all the tokens only go into proposal D's bucket. Now, that's, that's stage number one. Now, we can add, so we can allocate um, the intensity to the different kind of proposals available and you can vote on many proposals at the same time. What do I mean by continuous? Because this is also, what, what we have here is to add in the factor of time. And for each bucket, there's a hole in the middle or there's a hole where um, your water drops out, comes out. So this, so we are, we're filling the bucket with more votes, but as you fill, the bucket also starts licking some votes out. So then if, why do we want to do that? Because we want to make it costly to bribe. If, if it's just going to be um, a, a bucket that says, uh, that it's just a bucket with no leaks, I can just bribe a person one time and say, okay, Bribe you one time and you fill all the tokens up with proposal E, proposal E gets filled up, proposal E gets executed. Then it's, it's a lot cheaper, right? But if let's say the token, the, the bucket is leaking out votes and every two days I have to continuously vote into the ecosystem or into the bucket, then I have to keep adding more votes in and now it becomes more expensive to be bribing someone because I'm, I'm not just going to be bribing them once. I have to bribe them every time it's time to vote because the bribe is, the, the vote is leaking from, from the bucket. I have to keep paying the guy a lot more to be filling the bucket up. So it makes it quite expensive to vote. So you can resolve the problem of, of that. And you also, what you also want to do is you want to reward um, token holders who are consistent to their preference. So if let's say I'm very, I'm very interested in proposal A, then every time it's time to vote, every two days it's time to vote, I keep voting proposal A, proposal A, proposal A. Instead of the, a person, remember we talked about last minute vote swings, where the last person just comes in and dumps a lot of money in proposal C. The system doesn't allow you to do that. The system, the system is time sensitive and uh, there's a effect of time. And if you're doing, if you keep adding tokens to proposal A from the beginning of time, then it, your, your vote becomes more, more valuable. So if you think of reputation, then your, your token has higher reputation versus someone who does a last minute swing that just drops a lot of tokens in, in proposal C and with very, with, with much lower reputation. This is something that you can, you can combine, you know, reputation as well as conviction voting. And you can also combine stuff like projectic voting. So not just do we make it expensive for, to, to cost, costly to bribe. We also make it costly in an exponential way through through quadratic voting because now the vote is a square is a square of number of votes available. So basically, these are these are a lot of pieces that you can mix together to to create very interesting and fun um, voting mechanisms. And at the end of the day, it really depends on what you want to vote on. Is is this is your project going to require? Um, is your project really prone to bribery? Is your project does your project require a lot of different proposals to be voted at the same time? Is your project looking at, you know, maybe uh, very similar votes and you want to have this kind of voting system? Maybe your project is also, it's not like that. Maybe your project is just looking at how to, um, where you have different votes and you want to save time and you want to vote a lot at the same time. And um, maybe how, how much of a decay function you want to have, which is the whole where votes drip out. You know, there are a lot of things to consider. 
and a lot of things to play around with. It's very, very fun. This is, once again, I talked to you that donation platforms are usually a very good case study. So Given is a donation platform that they're trying to implement permission voting on. And this is the QR code that you can link them and read more about them. I think it's very interesting. And I might do a case study on them for the next, um, for children design. Um, I have not thought about that yet. And I will probably, yeah, probably use Given. Because I've really talked about um, a currency and then a secure a utility. Um, maybe something about donation might be quite interesting. I don't know. I will check that and get back to you when it's time to make the film. So link, go to this link if you want to learn more. Otherwise, we go to solutions.